son of my beloved. Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai Barakatha Bahashim Rakwakadash. Get started in a minute or so. And my intent is to make this short, just a brief discussion on Bible prophecy. Shalom. Barak Tanya Hawa. Barak Tanya Hawa Shai. Barak Tanya Hawa. Barak Tanya Hawa Shai. Call Halayim La. Yahawa. Bahashem. Yahawa Shai. Bahashem. Erkwan Kadash. All praises be to the Most High. Yahawa. In the name of the Son and our Lord and Savior. Yahawa Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. Double honor and respect to the apostles and elders, a great millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson, a brief discussion on prophecy, a brief discussion on prophecy. So I want to talk about where we are today in terms of Bible prophecy. So many people remember the shutdown during the pandemic. People were restricted or had restricted travel. Many people were told six feet apart, stay at home, don't travel. And here we are now, post pandemic, where millions of illegals are crossing into the border. And many of these places where they're residing, there's outbreaks. And keep it keep it basic and a little vague because I don't want the video to get taken down. So only to go through about two and a half years of restricted travel, lockdowns, and getting the juice, only to enter into a time frame where millions of illegals have crossed over into the border. So you have that going on, and then you have what's called disease X or X-ray that is now prevalent and circulating throughout the states. So what's coming is going to be much worse than what we experienced over the last two and a half years or so. So we're entering into a time that the beloved apostle Tahar coined the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. 
we got that going on. We have the different National Guard stations getting mobilization orders. One of them being in Ohio, where many Guard Reserve units have been not only mobilized, but the nuclear, biological, radiological, and chemical teams have been put on alert. Or NBC teams, nuclear, biological, chemical, and radioactive teams put on alert in Ohio. And if I'm not mistaken, some of the radiological teams may have even been put on alert in New York. So we're getting ready to enter into a phase or a point of no return. A point of no return. Many of the citizens are still angry at the lockdowns. The mandatory pokey dope. The mandatory hokey pokey that transpired where they lost their jobs. Many were laid off. Many were put on lockdown or restricted only to witness firsthand, only to witness firsthand millions of illegals coming over without restricted move, movement, without mandatory hokey pokey. <coughs> so what is the point here? Who's at the helm of the CDC, who's at the helm of these legislations being passed down? <clears throat> the least of the flock. The Khazars, or the small hats, as we call them. Many of the CDC positions are filled by small hats. You see? So the least of the flock are the leaders of this current world. He that leadeth in the captivity shall go in the captivity. So they are leading these provisions, these legislations. And their brethren being in the Ukraine and occupying the Holy Land are Khazars. So Israel is calling for U.S. involvement or American involvement to, to attack Iran because Iran is threatening a retaliatory attack or strike. Let's go here. Brother, Hebrews 28 and 8 the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against many great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. So now disease X is at the forefront. So it's not by accident that the prophets are sounding the alarm at a high frequency day in and day out. So the men of the Lord are telling or forewarning of these things to come. So once again, many of the key leaders of the CDC are small hats. Those that are leading the World Economic Forum, small hats. Those that are driving foreign policy, small hats. So great travail is underway, great trouble, great tribulation. Jeremiah 30 and 5, For thus saith the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling and of fear and not of peace. Ask ye now and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness. Great fear. See? Great terror, that paleness. Great travail. 
Jacob's trouble. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. So the policemen are not going to be able to go door to door. They're not going to be able to get called 911. This is one of the reasons why a man is going to be more valuable than fine gold. Robotic dogs are going to be doing air samples, surveilling the air. Radioactive and biological teams. They showed us in the movie Outbreak. Men in these uh, chemical suits wearing a mask, looking like spacemen. And then they're going to be accompanied by robotic dogs and robots that are designed to go out and conduct air samples. If that area is deemed contaminated, then every person in that area is going to be deemed a chemical vector or a biological vector, which means you can carry, transport, and pass the infection, which makes you a lethal threat. This is why the authorities are going to be coming in like madmen, sparing none because of disease X. No mercy. So this is the sword of the Lord that is getting ready to be unleashed. The sword of the Lord. Gangslayers, mockers, and scoffers. Shalom, beloved. Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Barakatah. Hashem, or Kakadash. See? So the Lord is going to lay the city's waste. I've seen the visions. Bodies laying everywhere. Mouths wide open. Death is not a pretty sight. I've seen the visions. Eyes wide open. Mouths wide open. With a distant stare. Okay? There's a body there with no spirit. Just staring off into the distance. Terror is going to be everywhere and in every place. Brother uh, Mashiach Arazaka. See? It's right here. 2nd Ezra 16 and 72. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. They shall waste. Then shall they be known who are my chosen and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. So the Lord is going to preserve a fine, precious gold that is going to be tried through adversity, his elect. Let's go here. Let's go here. I want to go to um, Jeremiah 49. So the small hats is really at the helm. They are leading these events of chaos, causing catastrophes. They are calling the shots. So they are the first of the nations. They are at the top of the proverbial pyramid. You see on your $1 bill, Sodom and Egypt, America, the all-seeing eye, the Luciferians, or the illuminated ones, the light bearers, or bearers of the light. Look up Albert Pike, a 33rd degree Mason, and a high-level warlock. So these people study sociology, how to move the crowd and manipulate the minds of the masses. Mass means death. Even in our music, where you see all the crowd moving in unison, waving and worshiping, they're under mind control, mnemonics, a trance-like state based on certain ancient tones and sounds, musical notes, dark magic, black magic. These people are in a trance. Let's go here. Brother Shapak of the Twelve, Shalom, beloved. Yehovah, Shem, Yehovah, Shalom, Barakatah. 
Revelation 2 and 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Ten days is perfection. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Whenever we're reading the Bible, we can't read it like a Harry Potter novel. Who owns the FEMA camps and the internment facilities, the small hats? Who led us into captivity? Khazars, small hats. See? So there's approximately 800 to 1,000 FEMA facilities that are operational in these current times. So it's talking about the leaders, the leadership, the first of the nations to head. Let's go here to Jeremiah 50 and 45. Jeremiah 50 and 45. Therefore, hear ye the counsel of the Lord that he had taken against Babylon and his purposes that he had purposed against the land of the Chaldeans. The Chaldeans are high level warlocks, male witches. When you go into that word serpent in Genesis 3, it goes back to the Hebrew word nakash, which is a diviner, a diviner, which is a sorcerer or a warlock, a male witch. So it's speaking to the illuminated ones, a wicked global elite. <clears throat> Jeremiah 50 and 45, therefore hear ye the counsel of the Lord that he have taken against Babylon and his purposes that he have purposed against the land of the Chaldeans. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitation desolate with them. So the least of the flock is going to draw them out. Israel is calling for the United States of America or the daughter of Babylon to attack Iran. They're asking right now. The American military, the army, has missed its recruiting goal three years back to back. The third year straight, they're short their recruiting goal because they have poor leadership mismanagement, immorality, mischief, scandal, inequity, imbalance. So the leadership structure is broken. Somebody post that the military or their mighty men have forborne to fight. So we're living Bible prophecy real time. Their mighty men have forborne to fight. They no longer have confidence which, which is with faith in the American leadership structure, in its moral structure, or the fabric of its fight, um, moral foundations. They lack faith without faith or lack confidence. See, right here, Brother Gabar Agash, Jeremiah 51 and 30. The mighty men of Babylon have forborne to fight. They have remained in their holes. Their might has failed. They became as women. They have burned her dwelling places. So to forborn or to forbear, they're not participating. They're being held back because they lack the willpower or faith. They lack confidence or faith in this system, the third year back to back of missing their recruiting goals, which is pretty much across every branch. But the army has suffered a tremendous or devastating blow. 
Yup, the army is now taking retirees and disabled veterans up to the age of 70 years old. The water, beloved. Now that's desperate. Imagine you out there in the dating scene and, and you know, you're looking for somebody wearing diapers and hooked on oxygen tanks. So if that's not a sign of desperation, I don't know what is. You know, I'm not worried about it, you being on diapers and oxygen tank. Let's go. Let's go. That's desperate right there. So there's a recent military message went out. And I read it. I read the whole article. It said it doesn't matter your disability. We'll try to work through your disabilities is what they said. Now, some of the disabilities, they're going to say, okay, you're disqualified. But it said, don't, don't get so caught up on your disability. We'll work through most of those, basically, up to the age of 70. Now, that's desperate, okay? It is. You're rolling an oxygen tank around and wearing Depends diapers. And they're like, well, it's time for your physical. So American, the, the fabric that this system is built upon is morally corrupt. So the fabrics of this society is falling apart because it's interwoven or is a web of lies. First of all, they told, told the world they were the chosen people. Talk about, they just got a new movie came out with Moses with leprosy. Moses did not have leprosy in the Bible. And the Most High gave a sign where his arm turned leprous and he put it back in his bosom and it became back dark again like the rest of his flesh. But they got a new movie coming out where everybody's got leprosy in that movie. Most of them, rather, the key characters, including Moses. So this entire society is interwoven on the fabrics of a web of lies. So it's falling apart. A lie got to be built up or backed up by another lie, which has to be backed up by another lie, which got to be woven or built on another lie. So you wind up with a web of lies. That's the daughter of Babylon. Look closely at your dollar. There is a spider's web on your dollar bill. A worldwide web or network of the international global elite. The least of the flock. Or the Shapab, the 12. Yeah, they're getting, they want even disabled veterans up to the age of 70 with disabilities. Now that's desperate. Isaiah 19 and 14, the Lord hath mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof, and they have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof, as a drunken man staggered in his vomit. Beautiful. See? So there is a strong delusion on the inhabitants of Babylon. Drunk off black magic and witchcraft, to make a long story short, which goes back to Philosophical tenets as well. Philosophical tenets and indoctrination or the wine of Babylon. So it is a mixture of confusion and mental manipulation. Most of the citizens are under high level MK Ultra mind control. How many have seen people walking around like this with their cell phone, bumping into one another? You know, horns blowing. Bump, bump, bumping their heads against the edge of uh, Starbucks. Bug out. So there is a mental mind manipulation going on here. Deep, a deep sleep. Matter of fact, let's get that. Let's go here to Jeremiah 49. Let's let the scriptures come out. Jeremiah 49. Verse 7, concerning Edom, concerning Edom, Rome, concerning Edom, thus saith the Lord of hosts, is wisdom no more in teeming, is counsel perished from the prudent, is their wisdom vanished? Now when it's talking about their wisdom, we got to take our time. Left hand black magic, their enchantment is failing. 
So there is a remnant that's waking up to this wise counsel of the right hand of the Lord that is not subject unto the enchantment, the witchcraft, the mind control, black magic, and mental manipulation. It's right here. The brother is right on it through the spirit. Numbers 23 and 23, right here. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel. What have God wrought? See, so we're in that time where there is a remnant according to the election of grace. So the enchantment is bouncing off the armor of light. The elect is donning the armor of light and the helmet of salvation. So the arrows of witchcraft cannot penetrate the Lord's elect. You see that? Let's go back to that. Jeremiah 49 and 7 concerning Edom. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, is wisdom no more empty man? Is counsel perish from the prudent? Is their wisdom vanish? The Most High is making fun of them. They did not take into consideration the Lord's elect. They thought they had all of us brainwashed, bugged out of black magic, witchcraft, mind control, MK Ultra. First. Verse 8, watch this. Verse 8, flee ye, turn back, dwell deep, O inhabitants of Dedan, for I will bring the calamity of Esau upon him, the time that I will visit him. We're approaching that time when this man mandates his digital electronic leash, the sea hip or might be. The Lord is going to cast the fury of his anger in the rebuke of flames and fire. What is that dwell deep? Dwell deep. Well, let's look it up. Dwell deep. Deep comes from the Hebrew word. I had the fire sleazy E. He said, Jehovah, one last time. There's the door, sleazy. There's the door. Let's go into that word deep. Deep. Profound, to be deep or make deep or profound, comes from the Hebrew word, amak, amak. So these are the interworkings of their wisdom, you see? And right now they're trying to literally bury themselves underground. But really they've been able to hide behind smoke and mirrors, cloak and dagger, if you will being secretive. That's been one of their weapons, secretive. You see? In the cloak of darkness. So the Illuminati, they work in the shadow of darkness. You see that? So I had to look that word up. Amok. To be profound. To make deep. To make profound. So this is the, the high level elite. The Lord judges nations. But right now he's looking at the leaders, the leaders of Sodom and Gomorrah. Brother Shapad the 12, Matthew 24 and 22. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days should be shortened. So there's a lot of bug outs making videos trying to judge where we are as far as being at the, at the end. But they're going to mandate the sea hip first. The man of sin is being identified, and the Lord is going to cause nuclear missiles to be shot off here. For there shall, for there shall arise false anointed and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they should deceive the very elect. So remember, Esau is also a false prophet, a magician. 
which at which, what's at the head of that is the Roman Catholic Church. Rome goes back to Esau, Edom. You see? So he is also that man of sin and a false prophet. And looking at that holistically is the Roman Catholic Church. But the daughter of Babylon is the mistress and the mother of harlots. See? So the Lord is speaking to the head of that church, Esau, Edom. To take that a step further, the first of the nations, Amalek, the Chaldeans, the high-level elite or Luciferians, pursuant to Isaiah 14, Lucifer, the light bearer, so-called, the Illuminati. He's speaking to the head, and he's going to judge their nation. That's why the Bible says, he that leadeth in the captivity shall go in the captivity. Let's go here. Jeremiah 50, verse 45. Therefore, hear ye the counsel of the Lord that he hath taken against Babylon and his purposes that he hath purposed against the land of the Chaldeans. Surely the least of the flock, <coughs> surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitation desolate with them. See, so they're calling on America to stand up, to fatten up or beefen up its military and to join its alliance against Iran or God. Well, Iran and Russia, which is the a semblance of the Medo-Persian alliance. So they're trying to draw out the daughter of Babylon. Let's look up least of the flock. So Russia in its entirety, the inhabitants and the land is Gog Magog. But remember, they are aligned with Libya, Iran, or Persia, and Ethiopia. So it is a semblance of the ancient Medo-Persian Empire that took down ancient Babylon. So the Lord is moving the chess pieces around and tapping into the old playbook. Let's look up that term, least of the flock. <clears throat> least comes from the Hebrew Sa'an. <clears throat> Sa'an, which means small, small, figuratively of men, small. So when you say small, it also gets to be despised, to be small. You're looking at me like I'm short, inside joke. So to be small or despise. See? Like you insignificant. You don't matter. But also despise or detest it. Let's look it up. And we're going to go to Obadiah. I need more on that. On least of the flock. Yup, it's right there. Right here. Obadiah. One. Only one chapter. <laughs> Obadiah. Verse two. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. So Americans are still pissed off. Even the world is at them. Locking them in their houses, lockdowns, restricted travel. <clears throat> okay, being tagged and stamped. But yet, opening the floodgates of illegals. Where's their restricted travel? Where is their lockdowns? You see, in the leadership structure of the CDC are led by small hats, Amalek, Khazars. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. 
Let's look at that word small. The least of the flock shall draw them out. The least of the flock shall draw them out. We're going to look at that word small. Small comes from the Hebrew word katan. Katan, which means little or little of quantity, little in age or importance, less or least. So it means insignificant, unimportant, or young. So it means to be, it's detestable, you know? Like you're looking down on a dog. When you see a wet dog that's dirty, got fleas all in it, ticks, it's got skin diseases, a skin rash, hair falling out, a grimy, diseased, scroungy dog. You're looking down on it like, oh, you know, stay away from me. Don't touch me. Don't come near me. So they're small in your eyesight, detestable. Yep. Yeah, this is a good precept. Beautiful. That's the spirit. Isaiah 40 and 15. Brother Gabar Adama. Isaiah 40 and 15. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as a small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the owls as a very little thing. Minuscule. Little. Nothing insignificant, small, which is also or a synonym, detestable, despise. Thou art greatly despised. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. No matter how, <laughs> no matter how many of them come together in a mass to pray, their prayers are not heard. I don't give a damn if you got a, a billion of them, of the little hats coming together to pray and beating their head against a brick wall. The Lord is not hearing them. So their sacrifices are not acceptable. Isaiah 40 and 17. All nations of him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. So they are a smoke in his nose that can never be restored or vented or made acceptable. Obadiah verse 3, the pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? So now, when you look at this scripture, we got to be able to connect the dots. We got to go right to Revelation 12. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down, having great wrath, for he knoweth he have a short time. So although they have boasted themselves in their space force, their technology, their global reach, their military, economic, political, and diplomatic dominance and reach worldwide, their international space force, they're going to be brought down to the ground and come a crashing down. So the Lord is making fun of them. So when we read this, we got to be able to connect the dots through the Holy Spirit and get rid of the pride, offload the pride so the spirit can flow. See, there's another one. Brother Shabbat the 12, beloved brother. Shalom. Isaiah 47 and 1. 
come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. So right now, everybody worships this hoe, the daughter of Babylon. She's looked upon as being pristine and clean and delicately and white. Everybody wants to grab her hand and throw down their jacket over the, the mud puddle and say, now you can step on it. I got you. Everybody's simping for the daughter of Babylon. But see, she's getting ready to be smacked face down in the mud. There's the door, Ho. There's the door. So she's no longer going to be looked upon as the beacon of tenderness and morality and wisdom and sending her kids over here spending, you know, uh, $30 million to come over here and get educated. No longer looked upon for religious guidance. You see, moral guidance and direction political and economic advice, how to manage your international stock exchange. You see, all these nations are simping to grab her hand, throw down their nice garments so she can walk over. But see, her thighs are being made bare. Her filthiness and disgusting rottenness. You see, 222 years of peace out of approximately 240 years of existence. At war, 93% of her existence. But yet she's telling you she's looking for terrorists. How are you the one looking for terrorists, but you the one been waging war 93% of the time of your existence? So now her mascara is running all over the place. She looked like she's been crying mud. Her lipstick looks like the Joker, smeared all the way up here, okay? Looking like an overstretched smile. Her lipstick is smeared. Her eyeliner is blurry. Looking like she's been crying chocolate coffee mud. It's over, God of Babylon. The nations are no longer running to throw down their garments and grab her by the hand and escort her over the mud puddle. They're like, you got feet, don't you? Okay, well, get. So she's being looked down upon. Insignificant. Nothing. Raggedy and raunchy. Went from being a lady to a thot. Okay? She went from being Josephine to Laquisha. There's the door, Keisha or Laquisha. You know how to walk. There's the door. Instead of Miss Josephine. Now she's just Keisha. The daughter of Babylon, nothing, raggedy and raunchy, ratchet. Shepard the 12, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 50 and 24. I have laid a snare for thee, and thou art also taken, O Babylon, and thou was not aware. Thou art found and also caught, because thou hast striven against the Lord. So the Lord is going to draw them out by their brothers by the Khazars, the little hats over in, in that area, the Middle East so-called. You see, the Ukraine has already shown forth indications that prophecy is being fulfilled. Who are their allies? You got it. Israel, the landmass, and the Israelis. So they're being drawn into this fight, and the Lord is going to Draw out the northern army, North America, the daughter of Babylon, to occupy Saudi Arabia. I think that's Joel 2 and 20. Joel 2 and 20, somewhere in there. You see? So they're being led by the least of the flock. Their shadow governorship, their shadow government which ultimately goes back to the international bankers. But what's at the forefront is the puppet government that's been set up over there underneath the international global elite. Let's go ahead and end it there. Brother GMS Gabar Adama,
Jeremiah 49 and 20. Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord that he have taken against Edom and his purposes that he have purposed against the inhabitants of Timan. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them. So you got that land mass of Israel and the daughter of Babylon that's going to be hit by nuclear missiles. So these prophecies are speaking. So their army is going to be drawn out. Their militaries that have missed their military recruiting objectives for the third year in the row. Okay, they're demoralized. You got inadequate leadership. You have shady leadership characters. You got favoritism and racism in your ranks. And you're engaging in wars that are going after gold, oil, and drugs. Gold, oil, and drugs. Other nations' resources. Funding a military industrial complex. Raytheon, McDonnell Douglas, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman. So this is a military industrial complex of the beast, the military proponent, feeding off blood of your sons and daughters. So the Americans have caught on to that. That's why we, we read that thy mighty men have forborne to fight. They're like, to hell with this. I'm done. Let's close out here. Joel 2 and 20. But I will remove far off from you the northern army and will drive them into a land barren and desolate with its face toward the East Sea, the Persian Gulf, and its hinder part toward the utmost sea, the uh, Red Sea, and his stink shall come up, and his savor shall come up, because he have done great things. So the Lord is going to make the northern army, the military of the daughter of Babylon, dust particles. So the people are going to be breathing in your miniaturized dust particles of your flesh. You're going to become a part of the Saudi Arabian desert. In other words, a part of the Saudi Arabian desert because you were pursuing gold, oil, and drugs. Other nation shit. You should have just stuck to what you have rather than pursuing and chasing covetousness. I got land, but I want more land. I got oil, but I want more oil. I got resources, but I want to expand my resources throughout the Holy Land and throughout the Mediterranean area and maximize my profit earnings and stocks and build my portfolio, if you will, where the Lord is getting ready to burn your portfolio off your covetousness and greed and bloodshed. You're not satisfied with blood. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, or Kadash. Focus on prophecies, a brief discussion. See you on the next lesson, Lord. Oh, remember, the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Remember Exodus chapter 17. See? So we're in that time now. We got to read that chapter and understand it. So the Lord is going to finish the game. The Lord, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, is going to finish the game. That battle between the right and the left. Jacob and Esau through Amalek and the emerging prophets of the men of the house of David. 
two opposing forces. Two opposing forces. See that? That goes right back to Revelation 12. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels. The tabernacle of David under Yahweh is going to fight against the dragon. The wicked global global system under the Illuminati or the Luciferians, the light bearers, so-called, or the uh, international bankers. Rome 2.0, spearheaded by the military arm of America. So the Lord is going to intervene, a spiritual intercession or intervention. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh B'Hashem Yahweh Shai. B'Hashem, Rakan Kadash. Double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much love, honor, and respect to the elect of the house of Israel, to the 144,000 mighty men, and to the beloved brothers of the spiritual realm that's going to join the segments of 144,000 here and combine to make 144,000. To the elect and to the beloved ladies of the hopeful elect of the house of Israel, to you we say, Barak thumb. And Shalom. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Prime your Shirella and the Bad Babal. We got next, Lord willing. Prime your Shirella and the Bad Babal. Rakatham. Shalom. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Shalom.